Okay, we think we have some time to talk about some facts before we go and sit in the line for Hall H. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts, the series where we reveal five nerdtastic facts about an interesting topic. Welcome, my friends. I just wanted to say that the Planet Fall trilogy has been a huge influence on me and, and my w work and... Don't tell me. You're a writer. For this list, we'll be delving into the comic archives of San Diego Comic-Con, lovingly known as SDCC. The fans, the panels, the cosplay, the Misha Collins bringing people coffee. We've seen the mojo signal in the sky, so it's time for us to don our heroic capes and serve some facts. Number five, it started in a basement. I saw Star Wars, and I'm not a movie expert, but I think it's safe to say it was the greatest film of all time. <laughs> Finally! Someone who understands. San Diego Comic-Con is known for being one of the biggest, if not the biggest, assembly of geeks, so it's hard to believe that it was once held in a basement. In 1970, comic book artist Shel Dorf, comic book store owner Richard Alf, and publisher Ken Kruger created SDCC, or rather, San Diego's Golden State Comic-Con. The three-day event was held in the U.S. Grant Hotel's basement, where 300 people showed up, a small, humble number that's been steadily increasing over the years. The convention hit 1,000 attendees in 1974, 10,000 in 1989, 50,000 in 2001, and an astonishing 100,000 in 2005. In 2016, passes sold out in under an hour. We're about to buy tickets for Comic-Con. <laughs> T-minus 45 seconds. They sell out incredibly fast, but as long as one of us gets Good in, Good Lord, this is not the time for flirting, keep it in your pants. <laughs> Number four, fans saved Comic-Con after a break-in. Fans are the lifeblood of any event, and no convention knows this better than Comic-Con. I, I love it here. You know, it, just, it, it feels so right. This goes deeper than cosplayers dominating the streets of San Diego. This is about fans coming together to help the convention out of a financial crisis. In 1979, the Comic-Con's treasurer's home was broken into and $12,000 worth of receipts were stolen. Excuse me. <laughs> This might not seem like much considering how big the convention is now, but back in the early years, that amount was make or break for the con. <laughs> Organizers had to appeal to fans to help pay off the debt. And like a mighty group of crystal gems, they saved the day. We are the crystal gems. We'll always save the day. The Comic-Con class of 79 didn't just dress like heroes, they were heroes. Number three, it's about more than just comics. You have literally the entire fan base for your movie or TV show here in one concentrated place. So it's basically the world's largest focus group. Despite the name Comic-Con, the founders always wanted the event to cover all aspects of pop culture, creating an inclusive playground for all fans to enjoy. This meant going beyond comics and including television and films. SDCC's first Hollywood panel was, big surprise, Star Wars focused. Charles Lippincott, the film's marketing director, showed off slides from the film to a handful of attendees. Yeah, it took a while for such panels to gain momentum, but gain momentum they did. Thanks to the success of Brian Singer's X-Men, film panels became a must-have at the convention, hence Spider-Man and Star Wars Episode II Attack of the Clones being featured in 2001. Yes, there was a time when Episode II was a selling point. It's not fair. Number two. The first Comic-Con costume contest was in 1974. Oh my god, you guys would make the best Luke and Han. Excuse me? Oh, Star Wars cosplay. Cosplay? Costume play. You know where people dress up as their favorite anime or movie character? You can't spell SDCC without C-O-S-P-L-A-Y. That might need a spell check. Costume play is the thing to do at Comic-Con, and conventions in general. Because, really, whether you're fighting crime or walking the halls for fun, who doesn't want to be Batman? I am Batman. Or am I? Yes, I am Batman. Cosplay is such an essential part of the convention experience that it's hard to believe that it wasn't until the fifth year of the convention that they inaugurated Masquerade, the annual costume and makeup contest. That was in 1974. We can only imagine the pain of finding picture references for your character without the internet. I know Mr. Data isn't supposed to smile, but here it comes. Number one, costumes and comics are big business. Not only do festival passes sell out in advance, but so do all the nearby parking spots. And I want a parking spot. You don't have a parking spot? No. SDCC is just that important to fans. It's also hugely important to the city. For one, it creates jobs. The con requires all 500 of the San Diego Convention Center's regular staff, plus extra security officers, shuttle drivers, and more. 
Estimates have it bringing in somewhere between $135 million and $193 million to the area, a few million of which goes directly to the city itself in the form of tax revenue. For a four-day event, that's pretty spectacular. In recent years, the mayors of nearby Los Angeles and Anaheim have both reportedly jockeyed to get Comic-Con to leave San Diego, but thanks to some heroic negotiations, it'll stay in the town that gave birth to it until at least 2018. Does anybody else feel like there's very little difference between sports fans like these and cosplayers? I mean, they're both dressing up like the heroes they're fans of, right? For more superpower top 10s and make or break top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. How much? $1,349.99. Are you gonna get it? Just a bitch it. Fair enough. Thank you.